Yet, the prophet Daniel in the Old Testament, chapter 12, verse 10, he warned that when the great Antichrist finally did appear on the world scene, the vast majority of mankind would be taught to totally unaware that his reign was beginning. Indeed, St. Paul tells us in his first letter to the Thessalonians that the beginning of the reign of the Antichrist will actually be hailed by most people as the dawn of a new era of peace and security. The main question that I want to address this afternoon is how can we recognize the Antichrist? Should he come in the lifetime of most of us here, how can we recognize him? What are the marks foretold in the Bible by which we will know he is, in fact, the Antichrist? And what will his reign over the world be like? Both the Old and the New Testament contain many descriptions of the Antichrist and his reign as well as sacred tradition, which has preserved for us the preaching of the apostles, as recorded by the early martyrs and saints of the church. Describing the Antichrist this afternoon, delineating his marks, I will be drawing from what is written in Holy Scripture and what can be found in the sacred tradition of the church. The best overall description of the Antichrist is given by St. Paul in his second letter to the Christians of Thessalonica in chapter 2. And this is what Paul said. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling to meet him, that day will not come until the apostasy comes first. Apostasy is a Greek word meaning a rebellion against Christ, a rejection of Christ, what we might call today the death of God. Complete rejection of God, rejection of his rights over us, over our government, over our social life. And we are seeing this apostasy not only here in our beloved America, we're seeing it as an organized, formal revolt of Marxism against Almighty God and his rights over the world. And the reason these people want to kill God, the reason these people are proclaiming the death of God, is so that they can take God's place. So Paul continues, that day will not come until the apostasy comes first, and the man of sin is revealed. The son of hell, Paul calls him, who will exalt himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember, Paul wrote, that when I was still with you, I told you this, and you know what is restraining him now. Paul didn't mention it in his letter, but we know what that obstacle is from sacred tradition about which Paul was speaking that would restrain the reign of the Antichrist. So Paul says, and you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his own time. For the hidden power of sin is already at work, but he who now restrains it can do so only until he is removed, and then the lawless one will be revealed. The coming of this lawless one will be by the working of Satan, with all power and pretended signs and wonders. That is why we must be so careful today. 
especially about reputed apparitions that have not been approved by the magisterium. Our Lord warned us in Matthew's Gospel that the devil will work such great signs and wonders so as to deceive even the elect and lead them astray. With all power and pretended signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception of those who are to perish, because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. Therefore, God will send upon them a strong delusion to make them believe what is false, so that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but took pleasure in sinful living. The reign of the Antichrist is a punishment from God upon a sinful and rebellious mankind. Because man did not worship his creator, because mankind is not grateful to Almighty God for all his benefactions, because mankind is refusing to serve God, his punishment will be that he must now serve the devil. And the devil's vicar on earth, the Antichrist himself. 